more cellular energy is like having more money. When you have more money, you can do more things and you have more choices. When you have more cellular energy, you can do more things and you have more choices. And the lack of cellular energy is what causes disease. Aging and mitochondrial health. Now, as you and I think both know, disease should not be a part of normal aging. And you agree with that, I'm sure. Aging does not need to um, equal declining, but people seem to associate the two of them together. And you and I are here to tell them that's not necessary, right? That's absolutely true. So let's talk about some of the research. Certainly, I've written a lot about it, and you're on a bandwagon about it. Mitochondrial health is really critical to aging properly. What is your own research uh, showing about this? A lot of people are starting to hear more and more about mitochondria. Those of us that are in the more science-based community are well aware of it. And um, mitochondria, just to help people understand what they are, they're these little organelles that are in all of your cells <clears throat> and they generate cellular energy. They take the food that you eat and um, that, that is then converted into glucose. And then the glucose uh, is, tra is transported into something called ATP, which is um, cellular energy. Now, this is energy, this isn't just energy you need to run to the grocery store or go on a hike as I know you do, Dr. Gundry. This is uh, cellular energy that propels everything that happens in your body. We're talking about walking, talking, sleeping, breathing, lymphatic system, your immune system, your heartbeat. I mean, absolutely everything. And I tell people, more cellular energy is like having more money. When you have more money, you can do more things and you have more choices. When you have more cellular energy, you can do more things and you have more choices. And the lack of cellular energy is what causes disease and aging and decline. Because when you have these mitochondria, because they're generating everything that keeps you active and alive, when you have fewer mitochondria or you have damaged mitochondria, they are not able to function properly. So um, it's like trying to drive your car with a flat tire. It doesn't work very well. <laughs> so think of your damaged mitochondria as flat tires on your car. Now, the good news is um, your all the cells in your body, including um, all the components like mitochondria, are constantly changing. So whatever situation you're in, whether it's good or bad, it's not permanent. And that's why you need to take charge of your health so that if you are in a chronic condition right now, whether it's cancer or heart disease or Alzheimer's, it doesn't, it's not a death sentence, but you do need to provide your body and your mitochondria with what they need so they can regrow and start propelling your health back in the right direction. And you're going to find out why algae is the most number one powerful, simple, effortless way to do that. So back to the mitochondria. So they're this fascinating, uh, or as I say, organelle. They generate all the energy. But um, they're very um, um, difficult. It's very difficult for nutrients to get into the mitochondria because they are the only cell in your body that has two membranes. All of your other cells have a single membrane. It's called a lipid membrane, which is a fancy way of saying fats. And the mitochondria has that too, but they have a second inner membrane that is like, um, that is impenetrable by drugs, by most antioxidants, except the ones we're going to talk about in, in, in uh, that's found in algae. And so when they get damaged, you can't just eat a bunch of antioxidants like blueberries or vitamin C because none of those will get in there. And the reason why the mitochondria get damaged is because the mitochondria have their own DNA. Yes, you have your 22,000 regular nuclear DNA, but the mitochondria have their own, and there's only 37 of them. But those 37 control all the other 22,000. They control all the cellular communication. So when your mitochondria DNA get damaged, it's a it's a it's a it's a slide down to the oblivion of disease. You know, you and I have talked about algae uh, on several occasions. How did you get interested in algae in the first place? <laughs> I know. <laughs> 
It is pretty crazy, but I've been doing it now for 13 years, and I couldn't imagine a life without algae, honestly. So I was, uh, I'm actually Canadian. I live in, I've lived in Boston 30 years. <clears throat> and I mentioned the Canada thing because I have an MBA, and I was doing international business. And 15 years ago, my younger sister, who I'm very close to, who lives in Canada, she developed breast cancer. She's fine, by the way. She did recover. But when she was preparing for her chemotherapy, her oncologist told her, didn't suggest, but told her, she needed to change her diet to an alkaline diet because it would be important for her healing. They didn't tell her what an alkaline diet was. So my sister called me, big sis, who I can do anything, right? And I said, I have no idea what this stuff is, but I will find out. And it turned out to be a plant-based diet, which I know is right up your alley. And it was the phytonutrients and the chlorophyll that have been proven to build your immune system. And she wanted her to have the strongest immune system possible because chemotherapy is pretty rough on your immune system. Yeah. So I dug in, found for foods for her to eat, ones not to eat. And uh, she did go through chemo and she completely healed. In fact, I saw her last week in New York and we were celebrating yet another year of being cancer free. And in the process of helping her, I started learning about plant-based nutrition. And this was 15 years ago and you know, Nobody was talking about plant-based nutrition 15 years ago, and I'm just a very passionate person, and I thought, somebody needs to get this word out. I don't think you, any of your books have been published at that time, or I, maybe I wouldn't have pursued it, but I thought, I'm going to do something. I have no idea what. And so I went back. I gave up my corporate career. I went back to school, studied nutrition for a year, and then I taught plant-based nutrition. I put my own curriculum together, taught it at hospitals and, and corporations, and this is what truly led me to algae, because I'm sure as you have experienced Experience, I was spending all my time teaching the, to people the importance of eating more vegetables, although we, we both know that there's some downside to that, like like in some oxalates. <laughs> so what, what I, I got so much pushback, people were saying, oh, they're too heavy to carry home from the grocery store. They take too long to cook, to eat. I throw half of them out. Yep. My kids won't eat them. My husband won't eat them. So I thought, okay, I have to find a way to get the nutrition of vegetables into them without any work. So I went back and started reading all the things. I uh, did a deeper dive on what I'd found for my sister. And when I got to algae, that's when the miracle happened because it's the uh, most nutrient dense food in the world, endorsed by NASA, uh, having a thousand times more nutrition than any other fruit or vegetable, endorsed by the United Nations as the answer to world hunger because it's the highest protein in the world. There's 100,000 studies documenting the health benefits. It's been used safely for 60 years in Asia. And the only problem with algae, it seemed, was there wasn't a very high quality version of it in North America. And nobody knew what it was. <laughs> so um, I saw the science. I thought, I'm going to dedicate myself to getting algae into the world, and I'll do whatever it takes to get there. So I have uh, taught myself science. I'm actually applying to get a PhD because I know so much now. And I've got a school. I think it's going to give it to me. It takes a little bit of work. But um, my joy is helping people learn how to be healthy, learn how to correct their health, how to prevent disease with something so effortless and easy. All you have to do is swallow them. They come in little tiny, this is, I forgot the most important part, the thing that made vegetables easy is they come in these little tiny tablets. This one's chlorella, this one's spirulina. I should explain the difference between the two of them. But if you took 10 of these, 10 spirulina and 10 chlorella, spirulina we call energy bits, chlorella we call recovery bits. And we'll explain their difference and reason later. But um, this will give you, each tablet gives you the same nutrition. Oops, sorry as an entire plate of vegetables. And all you have to do, and I, I chew them, but most people swallow them. There, I just had a plate of vegetables. How easy is that? So now you can get all of the nutrition, all the chlorophyll, all the protein, all the 40 vitamins and minerals, phytonutrients effortlessly. And when I tell you some of the other medicinal benefits with, related to brain health and cancer, um, you'll start to see that it's more than just nutrition. I mean, it's truly your health insurance. It's beyond nutritional insurance. It's your health insurance. And uh, I can't claim that I created this. It's Mother Nature at her best. But I will tell you, we grow it and preserve it um, the most, in the most, using the most careful processes so that you get the maximum benefit from it. Because algae has been was the first life on Earth four billion years ago. And it just needed someone to help the world understand what it was and, and why it works so well. So it's uh, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Tell our listeners, is there a difference between 
seaweed and algae and microalgae and because when people you know hear the word algae they go exactly. oh i don't want to eat seaweed or right. i don't want to have sushi every day <laughs> right well it's a great question and and uh, <clears throat> i have i think i'm the only person that's helping people truly really understand what they are so first of all algae is a food it's um its own food category because it's technically not a plant, it's not a fruit, it's not an animal. So, and within the category called algae, there's two main types, macroalgae and microalgae. We're gonna talk mostly about microalgae, but first let me confirm what macroalgae is. It is that stringy stuff that you mentioned that washes up on shore, also known as seaweed, and it's called seaweed because it's only in the sea. Now, it's still good for you because it has lots of fiber and, and iodine because it comes from the ocean, but there's virtually no nutrition in it. Very fibrous, no nutrition. Microalgae is the complete opposite. It has virtually no fiber. In fact, spirulina has zero fiber because it's technically a bacteria, but it is the most nutrient-dense food in the world. And even we have a quote from NASA that even confirms that. And the reason why there's so much nutrition in it it's because they're so microscopic. You can get like a million cells on the head of a pin. So when you consolidate them into these tablets, you start to cons understand why there's so much nutrition in there. Now, unlike seaweed, the macroalgae, which is only in the sea, microalgae is everywhere. It's in the lakes, the rivers, the streams, the soil, your swimming pool, your aquarium. Um, and there are, unlike macroalgae, there's only a few strains of macroalgae. There's tens of thousands of strains of microalgae. Now, the uh, two uh, cat main categories are blue-green and green. Now, what I want you to know is that one strain of, of blue-green algae is called spirulina. There's other strains. So if you read about a blue-green algae closing your beach, they're not talking about spirulina. Uh -huh. um, and by the way, more algae gets a bum rap because algae only shows up on your beach because it kills bacteria. So somehow toxins have gotten into the water and you can't see them, but they're there. And algae is the cleanup crew and it's very visible and it absorbs all the toxins and it kills the bacteria. By the way, it's also the cleanup crew in your body. So it's not just the beach, it's, it's everywhere. So, so when you read about spirulina, it's A, number one, not from the ocean. It's, and it's not toxic. So, I, um, and same with chlorella. This is a picture of a chlorella farm and this is a picture of a, a spirulina farm. We grow ours in triple filtered spring mountain water in Taiwan. Taiwan is the gold standard for growing algae. So A, it's a food. Um, B, it's not from the ocean, the spirulina and chlorella. So we grow it in triple filtered spring water. We air dry it without high heat, which we'll, I'm going to circle back to because, again, that preserves the enzyme superoxidismetase, which has been known to protect your mitochondria. And then we press them into these little tablets that we call bits because they're literally bits of nutrition. Nothing else in them, just one ingredient, one calorie, 40 vitamins and minerals. They're ketogenic, they're vegan, they're raw, they're paleo. Um, it's quite remarkable. So, so algae is a food uh, category and the two algae do different things. But I just wanna show you one more thing. We sell them in these large bags and um, there's so much nutrition in each bag of a thousand tablets, it equals 551 pounds of vegetables. Think about that, that's about 50 grocery carts of food. And, uh, but the tablets don't require any cooking, cleaning, mixing, nothing. And they never go bad. We have expiry date of about three years and they actually never technically go bad. So it's, I call it very efficient nutrition. <laughs> Since you're talking about spirulina, but you also uh, make chlorella, uh, what, uh, wait a minute, isn't an algae an algae an algae? Come on. Well, it's like it's a food category. So just like a banana is not like a cantaloupe or, um, you know, green arugula is certainly not like cabbage. So algae is a category. And then the two main ones that most people know about are spirulina and chlorella. So what are they? Well, spirulina, as I mentioned, is a blue-green algae. So we pack a jars in a blue, um, and the, there's two pigments. That's why it's called a blue-green. And we're going to talk about that blue pigment later on because it has very powerful benefits, healing benefits 
uh, for your brain and for prevention of cancer. But the main thing people know spirulina for is its energy, which is why we call ours energy biz. How does it give you energy? Well, first of all, spirulina, as I mentioned earlier, is a bacteria. It does not have a cellulose wall. Why is that important? Because that means there's nothing for your body to have to break down to get access to the rich nutrition that's in there. So that's number one, very rapid absorption. Bioavailability is key. It's not just what you eat, it's what you absorb. Number two, spirulina has the highest concentration of protein in the world. Uh, and, and it has 18 of the 20 aminos, including the nine that your body can't make. So it's a complete protein. Why? And, and, the, pro, and the aminos are individual. Most animal protein is all bound up and can take days for your body to break down. Co collagen and what's called peptides, which are clusters of aminos, but algae, the aminos are individual. Again, why is that important? Because it allows your body to access all those rich aminos instantly. And then because spirulina is loaded with B vitamins that convert the aminos into energy, this is what gives you energy in the moment. It's also a vasodilator, which opens up your blood vessels and, and brings more oxygen and nutrition to your body. It also has very high iron, which brings more oxygen to your unit. But it's mostly the rich aminos, zero um, uh, effort for your body to break down. So you actually get energy back from not having to work at digestion. And then the access to the Bs and the aminos. And the energy you get it's called it's just quiet energy it's not like a stimulant because it's there's no caffeine chemicals or sugar in here again one calorie so there's no rush and there's no crash the best way to describe how you'll feel is you just feel awake that's it like you had a great night's sleep or a walk in the fresh air and that to me that's i mean i live on this stuff and i i mean i do eat real food but <laughs> i i i couldn't imagine life without algae especially spirulina because it's so nourishing and again if you're in the as i am uh, intermittent fasting group i i don't eat until one or two and but the, you know a lot of people it's hard for them to do fasting because they get tired and hungry this gives you the nourishment there's it's loaded with omega-3s and essential fatty acids so you can don't have to take a fish oil anymore and i don't recommend that anyways so it, it doesn't interfere with your fast, and yet it gives you the nourishment and the energy to get through your morning or your afternoon or your workout. So it's very much a, a morning, afternoon, or a pre-workout. Um, so that's the energy you get in the moment. And we're going to you know, circle back a little bit because we talked about the mitochondria at the very beginning. So there are nutrients in the blue, in the blue-green algae, the spirulina, that speed up the production of ATP. And we can dive into that a little bit later because it's a bit geeky. But so you get long term energy from the mitochondria protection, and you get instant energy from the immediacy of the digestion of the amino, of the, uh, amino acids from the B vitamins. And that's quite different from chlorella. I had an Instagram post and YouTube video about uh, how it's probably a good idea to get a lot of our protein from plants rather than meats. And I got a lot of pushback that um, plant protein is not absorbable, it's not digestible, and that you have to eat meat because that's the only way you can get protein. And... Uh, help our listeners understand that at least with algae, with spirulina, that may not be the case. Absolutely. And I think um, everyone has a point of view. And um, it's, it reminds me of that graphic. You, I'm sure you've everyone's seen it. Of uh, There's an elephant in the room, and it, there's a number of people with blindfolds, and each one of them have their hand on a different part of the elephant. And they think it's uh, an animal of some kind based on what their hand is touching. And so when it comes to nutrition, everyone has a filter that they read information from. And there is some balance, uh, some, some fact, but there's also your perspective. So th there are, you know, people who are vegan, they're mixing different you know, beans and rice to get a complete protein. But when it comes to algae, it is a complete protein. It has, as I said, the 18 of the 20 aminos. In fact, it has more um, collagen and more aminos than even collagen powder. So anyone who's taking collagen powder, you can, don't have to take that anymore if you take at least 10 to 30 of the spirulina tablets a day. It also replaces, you know, a, a multivitamin, a fish oil, CoQ10, and we can dig into that later on. So 
the fact that it's a complete protein, number one, the fact that it's 90%, 99% bioavailable, number two, and in fact, if you chew it, it gets into your bloodstream almost instantly, uh, maybe about 10 minutes if you swallow it because it just takes a while to get into your system. So it absolutely it, uh, has all the nutrients. In fact, we get a lot of pushback ourselves on the B12 because spirulina has all of the Bs, including B12. And people say, oh, it's an analog. It's not a real B12. Well, we did some research and it is the real B12. Um, so I want to assure people of that. And we can send anybody who wants the science about that. So this is from Mother Nature. She, I, I tell people, you know, when you take individual supplements, it's, it's sort of like listening to a, a single soloist. When, when you eat uh, algae, at least ours, because it's raw and untreated with heat and all the nutrients are preserved, it's the orchestra. It's like the Boston Symphony Orchestra. All the components, the factors, the cofactors, the enzymes, the coenzymes, the protein, it's all blended in this perfect, it's like eating at a thick star dining in your restaurant from a nutritional perspective. It gives you everything that your body needs. And if we have time, I'll dig into the fact that it's no surprise to me because your mitochondria actually evolved directly from algae. <laughs> I know when we started, you started to, uh, you mentioned that algae is a great source of superoxide desmutase, D SOD. Are there other things that algae contain that help our mitochondria that are kind of unique to algae rather than other food sources? Right. Well, glutathione is another one of those um, nutrients that can get into the uh, mitochondria to stop the free radical damage. And um, glutathione is also hard to find in food, in any kind of quantity that offers medicinal benefits. So, um, and a lot of people are getting glutathione drips. In fact, we're going to an IV drip conference in two weeks. And the thing about, uh, and, and the drips are terrific, um, but the downside of the, the, in this case, the glutathione drip is the glutathione has a half-life. That means how long it lasts in your body of like about an hour or two. So you get a, a lot of people do it after they've been out late at night and they want to, to clear out their liver. Uh, glutathione, by the way, is also a great detoxer. Um, but spirulina and chlorella, particular chlorella, and I need to circle back to explain what chlorella is because we did talk about spirulina. Um, so glutathione is very detoxing, which helps your cells to function properly. And it also can get into that inner membrane to stop free radical damage. So, um, and once again, your body makes glutathione for you from the moment you're born and then it stops or slows down after the age of 30. And so once again, just with like with the superoxidismutase, you stop having that uh, antioxidant protection that you had uh, in your early years. And again, this is why I feel that this is, to me, the reason why people are getting it, you know, disease. It's, it's a combination of not getting proper nutrition from other foods, having too many toxins in their body, which we'll address when we talk about chlorella, but also not having the mitochondrial protection from antioxidants that they used to have made for them you know, for free. And there are no other sources that are as concentrated of glutathione or, or uh, superoxidismase as algae. Um, the other nutrients you, you wanted me to, I think I'd like to mention are chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is also a nutrient that can get into the inner membrane of the mitochondria to stop free radical damage. And I'm going to give you one other little fun thing about chlorophyll. Um, studies have shown that when you take uh, chlorophyll and you are exposed to red light, it could either be red light therapy or sunlight, that um, that chlorophyll uh, gets into the uh, CoQ10 molecule, which is it's called a transport molecule in the uh, that geeky electron transport chain. Anyways, it, it recycles the CoQ10 molecule and generates ATP for you without food. Pretty amazing, right? And, and chlorophyll is a fat-based pigment. So um, again, we talked earlier about the cells having a membrane that's made of fats, and that's why you need vitamin E and vitamin A and vitamin D, omega-3, to keep your cell membranes healthy because healthy membranes allow nutrients in and toxins out. Well, chlorophyll, because it's a fat-based pigment, does the same thing. So when your cell membrane is healthy, it allows nutrients to get into the mitochondria. And then at the same time, you get the double hit that the, mito the chlorophyll protects the mitochondria from free radical damage. So it's a win-win. Um, and then the um, the other one that's um, able to get in, there's a little bit of a superoxygen, I'm trying to think the 
I, I missed one. Chlorophyll. Phycocyanin. Phycocyanin. Thank you very much. Oh yeah. Can I can I go down the rabbit hole of phycocyanin because it's my favorite topic right now. Yeah, I think <laughs> this is a cool topic that most people, number one, have never Would heard never, of. Never, never, never know about it, and this is what again, brings me such joy. So what is phycocyanin? Well, first of all, I want to spell it for you so that when you have time, you can Google it and, um, and uh, see that everything I'm telling you is true. So phycocyanin is the blue pigment in spirulina. Again, it's two, two pigments in spirulina, phycocyanin and chlorophyll. And it's spelled P-H-Y-C-O-C-Y-A-N-I-N. So this blue phycocyanin only found in spirulina and only found in raw spirulina. So ours, because we don't use high heat or frozen spirulina, but everybody else, all the other algae companies, they use high heat to dry their algae. So they kill the phycocyanin too. They kill the SOD and they kill the phycocyanin. So what I'm about to tell you, and this will blow you away, but it's all science-based, um, it can only be found in, in either our algae or any algae that's raw. So what does phycocyanin do? I'm going to hold up a sheet and I'm going to let you read it. It kills cancer cells. Hmm. Pretty crazy, right? So how does it, well, first of all, I'm showing you a picture and I'll send you all the links to this and all this, all the science references. Um, what I was showing Dr. Gundry was a, um, a, an experiment that was done in a research paper. They took cancer cells and put them in a petri dish and dyed them purple. And then they added this blue phycocyanin to the petri dish. And over 24 hours, they measured, they, could, they photographed how much of the cancer cells were still left. And it went from a dense uh, petri dish of cancer cells to virtually none in just 24 hours. Cancer cells, gone. And what stuns me is the amount of phycocyanin that they used in this test one of our tablets has 4,000 times more phycocyanin than they used in this test. So, in fact, the chemotherapies, that's why I want you to Google phycocyanin and cancer treatments, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, because the one of the ways the chemotherapy companies know, find out whether their treatments are actually working to kill cancer, because they use the phycocyanin in their treatments, is they measure something called cytochrome C. Now, um, cytochrome C is another one of those little transport molecules in that big electron transport chain. Remember I mentioned the CoQ10? That, that's, I call these things transport molecules. They're sort of like um, a shuttle bus. You know when you're at the airport, and then these, some of these airports are huge. You need to take a subway or, or shuttle train to get to your gate. Because you know, even though it's your, at the airport, if you can't get on the right shuttle train to get to your gate, you aren't getting on any plane. So in this thing called the electron transport chain where the electrons like the re relay race get passed from one to another there's two of these little shuttle buses the earlier one we talked about was coq10 which was between station i think one and two and this one is between uh, uh three and four now in a healthy cell the phycocyanin speeds up that transport molecule so that the electrons can get to the end station and that generates more energy more atp but in a cancer cell or something, they call them zombie cells, also known as a senescent cell. These are cells that have duplicated so many times, there's nothing left in them, but they don't die and they don't leave. They're sort of like someone who worked all their life, went into retirement, but refuses to go and you know, comes to the office and kicks over garbage cans and makes a big mess. That's a senescent cell because they're inflammatory and they mess up, they damage all the resident uh, cells near it. So in a cancer cell or a senescent cell, that blue phycocyanin, Instead of speeding up that cytochrome C, it kicks it out, it boots it out, and that cytochrome C molecule targets the cancer cells or the senescent cells and kills them. There's um, another way that the blue phycocyanin works powerfully in the cancer world is that it has what's called anti-angiogenesis properties. What does that mouthful mean? Well, it means angiogenesis is the growth of blood vessels. And so anti-angiogenesis means the interruption of that. And what happens with cancers and tumors is they basically hijack your blood vessels and reroute them to feed the cancer or the tumor.
And the blue phycocyanin found in spirulina, if it's raw, like ours, or frozen, stops that process. It stops the rerouting of the blood vessels to the tumors. And we didn't even know that. We were told, we found out about this because there's a group, an organization, a nonprofit called the Angiogenesis Association. It's based here in Boston. Dr. William Lee, Good L.I. Good friend of mine, yep. Yes, he's, he's, he's probably been on your show. Um, he's a great guy, and, and he called us and said, did you know that your phycocyanin has anti-angiogenesis properties? We're doing a big conference. Please come. And Bill Gates was there and Bill Clinton. And anyways, that, that's how we found out about it. But the fact that the blue phycocyanin can kill cancer cells and is proven to do that and is used by the chemotherapy companies is amazing. But nobody's sharing this with the rest of the world and who wants to go through a who wants to get cancer and by the way cancer cells are in our bodies as you know all the times but if you have a strong immune system and strong mitochondria and we'll get to the immune system in a minute because that's what chlorella does but if you have strong mitochondria and a strong immune system it can manage these cancer cells so they never take over but of course in these days this day Nobody has strong mitochondria and strong immune system. So we're, we're like sitting ducks. So if you start taking spirulina like ours or frozen, if you can find it, it's very expensive and messy, you can get access to the blue phycocyanin proven scientifically to kill cancer cells. I'd say that was pretty important stuff. And you don't ever have to advance into these late stages cancer or get re, you know, chemotherapy. And, and at the same time, algae is also the most alkaline food in the world. And that started me on this entire journey. And there's a German scientist uh, named uh, Otto Warburg, W-A-R-B-U-R-G, who won a Nobel Prize in the, he's German back in the 30s. And he discovered that cancer cannot exist in an alkaline environment. And the perfect alkalinity for your cells is 7.1. That's on a scale of 0 to 14. And so it's dead center. And the, when it's more alkaline, there's, that indicates there's more oxygen in the cell, that the cell is um, allowing intrusions in and toxins out and communicating with each other. So algae, in addition to killing the cancer cells and feeding the, the membranes he healthy fats, if it's chlorophyll, um, it also uh, provides that nice, rich uh, alkaline environment to even just prevent the cancer from, from taking hold. So it's, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> All right. So I know I asked you about chlorella and I distracted you. So let's get back to chlorella and why is that different than spirulina and what properties does it have? Yes. Well, chlorella... Um, is a plant. Spirulina is a bacteria, no cellulose wall. Chlorella does belong to the plant kingdom. And there's a couple important things you need to know about that. So first of all, because it's a plant, it has a cellulose wall. And in fact, it has the hardest cellulose wall in the plant kingdom. And so that hard cell wall does two important things. The easiest one for I'm sure people know about is that it has fiber. So it feeds your gut biome, it feeds your healthy bacteria what they need to create the short chain fatty acids that are important for your health. Um, by the way, 80% of your immune system is in your gut. So at the same time that you're building your gut biome, you are supporting your immune system. Number two, that heart cell wall attaches to toxins. I don't know if I mentioned, but the average adult in North America has an about 700 toxins in their system, whether it's glyphosate or uh, molds, and our immune systems simply weren't built to sustain that kind of toxic load. So because chlorella pulls out toxins, it's called chelating. Um, it pulls out all the heavy metals, glyphosate, molds, uh, alcohol, by the way, lactic acid for those um, athletes who are listening, so people take it after a workout. So it chelates them and take, pulls them all out of your body. So, so A, the fiber, feeds the gut biome, B, the hard cell wall, attaches the toxins. Now, chlorella's big claim to fame is it has the highest amount of chlorophyll in the world. Remember, spirulina has the highest protein in the world and also lots of essential fatty acids. Chlorella has fewer fatty acids, but rich in chlorophyll, 500 times more chlorophyll than um, arugula and uh, 25 times more than liquid chlorophyll. A lot of people are taking liquid chlorophyll, which I applaud, but if you could get more chlorophyll from chlorella and at the same time get 
protein and 40 vitamin and minerals, why not? And chlorophyll is important for a number of reasons. First of all, the chemical composition is almost identical to your hemoglobin. So when you take chlorophyll, you are building your blood, but the reality is there's virtually no chlorophyll in our vegetables anymore because the soils are so damaged, there's nothing left for the plants to pull up. And so if you've noticed, as I do, my arugula goes yellow after about day three. So chlorella, because it has so much chlorophyll, I mean, 500 times more chlorophyll than arugula, you are building your blood. And when you have healthy blood, you're going to have a healthier body, healthier organs, healthier everything. That's number one. Number two, as I mentioned, chlorophyll is a fat-based pigment. So it heals the cell walls just like an omega-3 would uh, or vitamin D or vitamin E. So it's very, very healthy for your cell wall. And it has all, chlorella also has all the nutrients that your um, immune system need to, um, to you know, work properly to build all those killer um, uh, cells when you are faced with an invader of any kind, whether it's COVID or anything else. So in general, because of the chlorophyll, which builds your immune system and cleanses you, chlorophyll and chlorella is, are considered a wellness algae. Um, oops, I'm going to just, sorry, drop something. I'm going to show you a picture of um, our bag of chlorella. So there's a thousand tablets in there. So chlorella, we call ours recovery bits because it helps you recover your health. So I came up with a fun analogy that might help people understand the difference between the two of them. Because most people take the spirulina in the morning um, because they, they're hungry and tired and they want nourishment, and they want energy for the day. And I, I speak at, le um, give lectures at large hotels, as I know you do. It dawned on me, well, that's sort of like room service. So, you know, because room service comes in and gives you all the food that you need for the day and you're out the door. So think of spirulina which we call energy bits, like room service. It gives you everything you need for the day. And then it dawned on me because chlorella it, um, is a, a wellness cleansing algae, takes all the junk in your trunk and gets rid of what you don't need. That's like housekeeping. So um, I think spirulina is your room service and chlorella is housekeeping. And if, if that's still, um, you want some other analogies, and we haven't talked about brain, which I will in a minute, because there's so many mitochondria in your brain, there's 2 million per cell in your brain um, is the most sensitive to damaged mitochondria. And because spirulina has that superoxide dismutase and the blue phycocyanin, which heal your brain and is also loaded with fats, think of spirulina as brain food. We all know that people eat we have been told to eat fat, cold, fat, fatty fish like salmon uh, because the omega-3. And I tell people, well, where do you think the fish get the omega-3 from? Yep, they get it from algae. And But they know that it's brain food. Well, so is spirulina. Spirulina is brain food. So if you have any, and we'll talk about this in, in greater detail in a minute, any brain issues, that's what you want, spirulina. And chlorella, because of the chlorophyll and the pulling out the toxins, and it's been used for IBS and Crohn's disease. It's very healing to the gut. It's a gut-related algae. So spirulina for brain, chlorella, which we call recover bits, for your gut. Now, I want to point out that there's something called the vagus nerve that joins the brain with the gut. And there's communication that goes down from the brain to the gut and up from the gut to the brain. So when you heal one of these organs, it naturally and automatically heals the other one. So maybe you might start with brain as your focus, but you're gonna find that your gut is working better. Or maybe you'll start, because you've gut issues, your brain will start functioning better. So they're very connected, but they do completely different things in your body. And most people, we recommend you take the chlorella before bed, because that's when your body goes through a detox or repair cycle. So we want you to have that best repair. It also stimulates uh, peristalsis, also known as uh, bowel movements. So, um, but you can take them any time of day with each other by themselves with food instead of food, but a minimum of 10 spirulina tablets in the morning and a minimum of 10 chlorella tablets before bed. 30 is better, but we, you know, we'll get people started at anything. Dumb question. Can you take too much of these things? You know, it's not a dumb question. It's a very great question. I get it asked all the time. And the answer is no. Why? Because algae is food. And ours is, uh, well, I should put a caveat. 
there's never too much of ours that you could take because other ones, other companies that may not be growing them as carefully and uh, there could be binders in there that are toxic. You just don't know. But I will speak on about ours. Absolutely not. I don't even, I don't tell people anymore how much I take because it throws people off. Um, I eat a large amount of this algae, spirulina and chlorella. I chew mine. I eat them with sea salt. Um, or I sometimes add pistachio nuts, which I know you know have very low lectins and oxalates. Um, so uh, you can mix them with anything, but um, uh, but you, and and if you do take a lot, like I do, your poop will be a little green. So don't worry about that. It just shows that the chlorophyll has made its way through your colon and is absorbing toxins, and you want it to do that. It's absorbing. Remember, it kills bacteria just like it does on the beach. So it's killing bacteria in your colon. Really great way to prevent colon cancer. Uh, so, um, but there is not any um, anything. I have I've taken them every single day for 13 years, and actually, it was my birthday a couple of days ago. I just turned 67. Congratulations! So uh, I'm no spring chicken, and I don't use Botox. We didn't even talk about skin or beauty, but um, I have virtually no wrinkles, um, and because it's rich in collagen, it protects your elastin. Uh, it's alkaline, so that I don't have any blemishes or brown spots or anything. So, ladies and gentlemen who are looking for uh, a natural food-based way to improve your beauty, retain it, preserve it. I'll tell you, you can't go wrong with with spirulina and chlorella. It's it's uh, that's why we actually have a second brand of of um, spirulina because we found women, um, to help women feel more comfortable with it. We call it Beauty Bits. It's identical to Energy Bits. We just package it in uh, a girly packaging. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the one I have on my countertop. <laughs> you mentioned several times brain health, and let let's go there. So we got great skin. We've got great poops. We've got we've got <laughs> green poops. Are there actually any clinical trials with spirulina or chlorella on brain? health? Absolutely. Well, we just did our own. So first of all, I want to share with you a great book that I would recommend called Brain Energy. It came out um, in November by Dr. It's written by Dr. Chris Palmer. He is here in Boston. I know Chris. Um, and he's a psychiatrist at the Harvard Medical School. And his book was revolutionary because in it, he documents how all brain issues, anxiety, depression, Alzheimer's, post-traumatic stress disorder, everything is due to damaged mitochondria everything and so if you can get the mitochondria functioning properly every, your brain pathways your neurotransmitters everything will function better and there's endless the tens of thousands of studies talking about the about brain health so i thought well you know what I want to do my own clinical trial to test this theory out because I know the research has shown that superoxidismidase and all these nutrients found in algae do help the mitochondria. So we did a small clinical trial of our own uh, back in February. We worked with a nonprofit group called the Gray Team. They're based in Florida, and their goal, their purpose for existence is to stop the suicide rate of military veterans, which is that at a heartbreaking 35 to 50 percent. Just let that sink in. 35 to 50 percent of military veterans are committing suicide. That's unacceptable to me. So we had met these uh, their organ the group a number of times, and they're trying all sorts of interventions. So they said, "Well, let's do a nutritional one." So we had a small group, and we did a brain scan uh, before they started, and we also connected them to something called Wavi, which measured their heart rate and heart rate variability and sleep patterns. And all we did. We was give them a pouch of our spirulina tablets, 30 tablets every day for, for 30 days. We asked them not to change anything else. No extra exercises, no change in sleep, no nothing. Just take 30 of these tablets a day. Now, when we did this, the second brain scan, and we probably could have, should have, next time we'll do it again with a bigger group, uh, do a brain scan every week. But after 30 days, with the first brain scan, by the way, I want to back up, these veterans had been discharged for in, up to 15 or 20 years because they'd had brain issues. So these were conditions that they had been living with. Well, we had a, uh, someone with MS uh, for, for a long time. They, they were willing to try anything. Of course, it was just food. So, but so we when we did the brain scans, the brain you can the way the EEG works is if there's all in this case it was all blue. I, I think I have a picture. Um, it showed that the brain was inflamed and no activity. 
And so, and with inflammation, that's when you have damaged mitochondria. 99% of, or 90% of inflammation is in the mitochondria. 30 days later, with all they did was take 30 tablets, inflammation gone, completely gone. And the MS person, uh, their, shake, their, their sh uh, shakes went away. They slept better. One of the individuals whose data we have, they had something called the heart rate variability, which shows your ability to respond to stress. Uh, they had a 50% improvement within 30 days, which is almost unheard of. So um, we're getting the it right. This the findings written up in a paper probably won't be ready till next year. Uh, Dr. Dominique D'Agostino is helping us with that. He's very deep in the science and NASA and keto world, and I've known him for a long time. So um, we're pretty happy. We were thrilled that uh, we saw these results from our algae. Um, so it was, it was, uh, it just gives me more encouragement to do more things for people. We had a customer, an uh, 85 year old customer wrote, write us who had Alzheimer's and uh, he said, you know, he couldn't even figure out how to work the microwave and his, he couldn't find his way home and his his wife got him on the energy bits and actually the the, spiral, the chlorella, the recovery bits. And within 24 hours, he was able to function again. And I can send you these actual testimonials. People email us almost every day. Um, we had another woman who was 85. She was incontinent, couldn't sleep, had no energy. Within 48 hours of taking the, you know, the two algae tablets, I think she was taking 30 day. She wrote us and said, well, today I took my grandson to school. I watched his basketball game. I went to my friend who was at the nursing home. I went for a three mile walk. I had so much energy. I came back and I cleaned up my garage. I painted my, my uh, kitchen. And uh, I, and then at five o'clock I sat down and had dinner because she'd only had the algae tablets. She says, by the way, my grocery bill has plummeted because she didn't need food anymore. And, and, oh, I forgot the best part. She now does CrossFit, 85 years old, and she's doing CrossFit. That's my girl. So, so I just wanted to assure you and your community that um, this isn't smoke and mirrors. It's just the needs of your body. And most of those needs are dictated by your mitochondria and your mitochondria are affected directly by what you eat. And they it, it responds well to the best to certain nutrients like glutathione, superoxydismutase, chlorophyll, um, and um, uh, the phycocyanin. But those new those four right there aren't found in any other food, and they aren't made by your body after the age of 30, and they aren't in anybody else's algae unless it's frozen. So um, I tell people. I never eat alone. I always eat with my mitochondria. So when you understand that carbs create the most uh, um, free radicals, processed carbs, that alone will start you on the path to having less mitochondria damage. And because your mitochondria and your cells are constantly regrowing, it's like, you know, if you don't water your lawn, it's not going to come back green. You have to give it some care and attention. Your body and your mitochondria and your brain are the same way. Just give it a little TLC. And now you know about these nutrients. You are. I'm trying to empower you so that you can make your own choices. Uh, and the great thing I like about algae is, again, when people are trying to make changes in their life, it's so hard to make a change. So even if you changed nothing else and just added 10 spirulina tablets in the morning and 10 chlorella tablets. And I promise you, you will see your energy improve, your brain focus improve, your skin improve, your digestion, your sleep. The list is endless and it's not fabricated. It's not a trend. It's just nutrition that your body and your mitochondria need. It's the key that opens the door to great health. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now. By eating all day, you're giving your mitochondria, those mini power plants in all your cells, no time to rest up.